Radio host Erica Bain and her fiancé Dr. David Kermani are out for a walk with their dog. They stroll through the park, engaging in a game of fetch with their furry companion. As the dog enthusiastically chases after the ball into a tunnel, Erica and David become engrossed in their conversation. It's only when they realize the dog has been gone for a while that concern sets in. Frantically, they call out and scour the area. The distant barking provides a glimmer of hope, and they spot their faithful pet. Suddenly, from the shadows, a man emerges, accompanied by two others. One of them is recording the scene. David insists they return the dog, but one of the men starts to taunt and make inappropriate advances towards Erica. When David tries to fend them off during the attempted robbery, the assailants respond with brutal violence. They mercilessly beat him while callously throwing Erica around, even slamming her onto the concrete. Rushed to the hospital in critical condition, Erica teeters on the edge of survival. She slips into a coma. Detectives Mercer and Vitali arrive at the hospital, proceeding to the morgue to investigate the apparent suicide of a woman. They then make their way upstairs, hoping to speak with the traumatized child of this woman. Mercer escorts her into an office, but their conversation is abruptly interrupted by her stepfather, Mr. Morrow, who storms in, demanding to see his daughter. Mercer firmly refuses and advises him to consult a lawyer, as he harbors suspicions about the man's involvement in his wife's demise, with his daughter as a potential witness. After several weeks, Erica emerges from her coma, gradually showing signs of improvement. During her recovery, she receives a visit from David's mother, who sadly informs her that his funeral took place a few weeks prior. Overwhelmed with grief, Erica breaks down in tears, yearning to see him once more. Soon after, she is visited by the police investigators working on her case. However, recounting the traumatic details of the attack proves too distressing for her to provide much assistance. Eventually, Erica is discharged from the hospital and musters the courage to leave her apartment. Nervously, she descends the stairs and steps out the door, braving the outside world. Erica proceeds to the police station in hopes of obtaining information about her case. The officer informs her that it might be a challenging process and asks her to wait for someone to assist her. After numerous minutes pass, Erica remains seated, overhearing the officer repeat the same instructions to others. Growing frustrated, she decides to leave, determined to take her safety into her own hands. Heading to a local gun shop, Erica is eager to purchase a firearm, only to discover that she lacks the necessary license and will have to wait for 30 days. Within the store, a man notices her desperation and proposes to sell her a gun for $1,000. He guides her through a market and into a back alley, where he presents her with a car K9, providing her with some basic guidance and including a supply of bullets. Erica accepts the offer. Later that night, she visits a corner shop to pick up some snacks. Suddenly, a man bursts into the store, angrily berating the store clerk for not looking after his children. Tragically, he proceeds to shoot the clerk dead. Erica skillfully conceals herself in the aisles, but her phone unexpectedly rings, drawing the attention of the armed assailant. He begins to search for the witness, his gun at the ready. As he unknowingly passes Erica, she fires three shots, with one striking him in the neck, causing him to bleed out. Nervously, Erica proceeds to the counter, retrieving the tape from the security cameras before swiftly leaving the scene. She heads home, going straight into the shower to wash away the tension. Shortly after, Detective Mercer and Vitali arrive at the scene, beginning their investigation to piece together what transpired. They survey the area, finding no missing tapes or money. They note that only one of the three shots hit the intended target, leading them to believe they're dealing with an inexperienced male assailant. That night, Erica rehearses her lines for her radio show, but her words seem disconnected from her current emotions regarding New York, especially after the traumatic incident. The following day, she returns to work, but her boss is concerned it might be too soon. For Erica, however, it's a way to reclaim purpose and meaning in her life. Erica's boss eventually relents, allowing her to return to the airwaves. As she begins to recite her lines, an unexpected surge of dark memories momentarily paralyzes her. Erica makes a courageous decision to speak from her heart. She candidly addresses how New York, a city she once knew, has transformed into a place she now fears, a concept she struggles to grasp in the wake of her traumatic experience. Her impassioned speech grabs the attention of Detective Mercer, who's driving at the time, along with everyone around her in the studio. Later that evening, Erica visits David's grave, remaining there until nightfall. On her way home by train, she records ambient sounds. Suddenly, two thugs harass a man engrossed in his music, forcibly taking his iPod. An elderly man attempts to intervene, but the thugs turn their aggression towards him as well, eventually driving both men off the train. Realizing Erica is still seated, 
They approach, taunting her. One of the men brandishes a knife, but Erica coolly draws her gun and fires, hitting both men dead on target. This time, all four shots find their mark. Erica then calmly exits the train, struck by the unexpected calmness she feels after the ordeal. As she walks on the street, passing policemen, she reflects on the fact that she didn't have to resort to lethal force, a revelation that surprises her. In a swift move, she rushes into the bathroom of a nearby bar, quickly shedding her hoodie and emptying her stomach. Mercer and Vitali arrive at the scene, discovering the iPod. They take note that it might have been stolen, and no money is missing. After freshening up, Erica steps back onto the street. Yet, she feels an inexplicable compulsion to return to the scene. Meanwhile, Detective Mercer observes the similarities between the two attacks and recognizes that their assailant is becoming more proficient. He heads towards the street where a group of reporters has gathered, spotting Erica as she walks away. Mercer follows her, expressing a sense of familiarity. Erica introduces herself and mentions her job at the radio station, expressing interest in interviewing him. This prompts Mercer to leave. Soon after, news about a vigilante patrolling the streets circulates. Mercer hands the iPod to Vitali, urging her to run a check to identify the owner, hoping to trace the vigilante's identity. Back at work, Erica's boss commands her recent impassioned monologue for attracting a substantial number of listeners, encouraging her to continue. Descending the stairs, Erica encounters Detective Mercer waiting outside. She considers leaving through a different exit, but Mercer enters, calling after her. He shares that he visited her at the hospital the day after her attack, and both he and his ex-wife are avid fans of her show, expressing their happiness at her return. He delves deeper into her case, assuring her that he will do everything in his power to apprehend the culprits. Mercer agrees to Erica's earlier request for an interview, and they settle in for a conversation. Erica poses questions about the elements he scrutinizes at a crime scene and seeks his perspective on the subway incident making headlines. Spotting Mr. Murrow on the news, Mercer confides off the record, revealing him to be a corrupt businessman and mobster who somehow orchestrated the demise of his wife and secured custody of his stepdaughter, the sole witness. Mercer acknowledges the legal constraints in this matter, maintaining that what's done cannot be undone. As they wrap up their conversation, Erica probes Mercer about his initial emotions when he first had to use lethal force. Mercer hands her his business card, urging her to call any time after work. On another evening, as Erica is on her way home, she's beckoned by a man in a parked car. Approaching, she discovers an unconscious girl named Chloe in the back. The man assumes he's in for a good time, but Erica swiftly draws her gun, demanding he surrender all his cash to Chloe. As they step out of the car, the man makes a desperate attempt to run them down, prompting Erica to fire a fatal shot that causes him to lose control and crash. In the ensuing chaos, the car strikes Chloe, resulting in a tragic accident. Erica swiftly contacts the police and discreetly watches as they attend to Chloe, who is subsequently taken away for medical attention. Upon returning home, Erica encounters her neighbor, who observes the blood on her cheek. The neighbor cryptically advises Erica to hold on to her sense of right and wrong. Mercer holds a press conference, with Erica in attendance, where he announces that the witness is now conscious and will soon undergo questioning. The following morning at work, Erica's boss informs her of the decision to open up the show for Callens, despite Erica's reservations about the format. Reluctantly, she begins taking calls, only to find that a significant number of callers express admiration for the vigilante, some even posing as the mysterious figure. Overwhelmed, Erica abruptly leaves. Racked with guilt, she contemplates surrendering to the police but ultimately decides against it. Instead, Erica reaches out to Mercer, seeking a conversation. Their meeting takes an unexpected turn when she finds herself outside Mr. Murrow's building. Erica acknowledges Mercer for his support before parting ways. Erica steps into the elevator alongside Morrow, who pays her no mind, exiting promptly to reach his car. Erica shadows him and confronts him directly. She queries whether he ever reflects on the life he took, the wife he murdered. In response, Morrow assaults Erica with a crowbar, inflicting injuries. Nevertheless, she retaliates, ultimately managing to overpower him and send him tumbling from the roof. Returning home, Erica is discovered by her concerned neighbor, who assists her inside. Bleeding and weakened, Erica confides in her neighbor about the act she committed. The neighbor, while acknowledging the gravity of the situation, refrains from prying further and aids in tending to Erica's wounds. Detective Mercer, harboring suspicions about Erica, invites her to the hospital, where he is set to interview Chloe. Nervously, Erica enters the room, and Chloe recognizes her presence. Mercer inquires about the events of that night, but Chloe asserts that she saw no one. As they depart, uncertainty looms. 
Mercer is puzzled by Erica's call the previous night and presses her for details about her whereabouts. Erica, however, offers a simple response, stating that she went to bed. The detectives bring in the owner of the iPod, but he recalls nothing out of the ordinary, just an elderly man and a woman on the train. They attempt to obtain a sketch, but the resulting drawing bears a striking resemblance to a celebrity. Mercer recognizes this as a common occurrence. At her apartment, Erica is surprised by Mercer's visit. He presents her with her recovered ring, explaining that it was found with a suspect's girlfriend attempting to pawn it. He requests Erica to identify the suspect in a lineup, to which she initially hesitates, but ultimately agrees. Upon arriving at the station, Erica spots the man who assaulted her. However, she denies any recognition and swiftly departs. Mercer catches up with her at the elevator, and the two decide to grab a meal. Mercer shares information about Morrow and the attack on him, along with details about their new suspect, a woman. Mercer subtly hints that Erica herself is now under suspicion and asserts that if necessary, he will pursue the truth regardless of their growing closeness. In a poignant moment, they connect before Erica chooses to leave. Empowered by a newfound determination for retribution, Erica sets out to inquire at local pawn shops, seeking to locate the woman who attempted to pawn her ring. Meanwhile, Mercer takes action and contacts a friend to run a trace on Erica's phone activity on the night of Morrow's death. To his surprise, he discovers that she was indeed at Morrow's building. Erica successfully locates the pawn shop and uses a bribe to obtain the woman's address. She tracks her down and calls her, attempting to identify her. Erica follows the woman into her apartment, demanding to know the whereabouts of her boyfriend. However, the woman, fearing for her own safety, admits that she witnessed Erica's attack and is reluctant to share any information. Disheartened, Erica leaves, but soon receives a text from the woman, expressing remorse and providing the necessary address. The message includes a video of Erica's own assault, causing her to break down in tears. In a moment of despair, Erica sends a farewell text to Mercer along with the video. Mercer, upon receiving the message, immediately rushes off, determined to stop her from carrying out her intended act. Erica reaches the building and gains access, spotting the men in an alleyway, alongside her faithful dog. Erica arms herself and approaches a gate, catching the attention of the man holding her dog. She shoots him, causing the others to flee. As she searches for the last suspect, she's ambushed by the man who killed David. He tries to strangle her, but Mercer intervenes, ordering him to get down. Erica, still filled with rage, wants to end it, but Mercer persuades her to lower her weapon. He then hands her his gun, urging her to do what needs to be done. Erica shoots the man, putting an end to the threat. Knowing the consequences, Erica turns herself in, but Mercer refuses to hand her over. He instructs her to shoot him in the arm to create a cover-up. She follows through, and they bid farewell before she leaves. Mercer plants his gun in the hand of one of the thugs, then releases Erica's dog. He calls for backup and is taken away in an ambulance. Erica returns to the place where she lost David, and her loyal dog joins her. Together, they move forward. Remember to enable notifications so you can catch more movie recaps like this. Thanks for watching.